My name is Tracy Bomwix, and I live at 3700 West Genesee Street at the corner of North Terry Road. I bought that house, an abandoned, derelict, unmortgageable property, back in 2004. I put a substantial amount of my savings into it, rehabbing, renovating it. I have roots in the community. My grandparents half raised me over in the block behind on Kenyon. I remember where the gray condos are now. There used to be a big horse field, and my grandfather would take me to the fence edge, and we'd feed the horses their apples and sugar cubes. It had been my intention to grow old in this neighborhood. And in the years that I've lived there, I've been listening to all the discourse about changes on West Genesee or the need for change on West Genesee Street at the corridor. I was against it for a long time. And then I started to listen to my neighbors who are really affected by the status quo. I started to do my own critical assessment of the situation, my own due diligence, quite often when some of our elected politicians weren't willing to do so. And what I discovered was our current zoning of residential through that corridor creates blight. It creates blight that's escalating. We have large, older properties on this street that no one wants to inhabit with children and families anymore, but they require investors to maintain and uphold those properties. They're bigger properties than a single income private practice of any kind of home occupation can really support. And so, as a community, if we want those properties to remain vital in our tax base and to be, be maintained and inhabited, we have to be willing to, in, to attract a different level of stakeholder to um, invest in our community. When we fail to do that, we create long propositions of long periods of time where some of these properties are left abandoned and um, unmaintained and as potential investors in the the neighboring the area the blocks behind uh, come up and down Genesee Street and consider gee do I want to live in this neighborhood they they're discouraged by what they see it brings the property values down and the tax base down and we all pay for that in the end but for me, the biggest and really the only point worth arguing at this point is the level of pollution that exists on a state highway with four lanes and between 24 and 27,000 cars a day. Our government, through the EPA, has done detailed studies that tell us that people living in that close proximity to that kind of traffic pollution are at risk. And the ones at risk most are children, the elderly and the unborn. We have had four decades of inaction by our elected officials until now. In good governance demands that elected officials create a comprehensive master plan for a town over time that would anticipate how the traffic and the development and the growth outside our area coming through our area would change our experience of that area. They didn't do that. We should have been having this conversation 20 years ago. And now it's too late for human beings to inhabit West Genesee Street safely. So we're trying to raise public awareness of this health crisis. We're trying to engage people that don't live on Genesee or even in the blocks behind to see that this is an environmental social justice issue. It is an issue for all of us for the health of a robust tax base that we're all burdened by um, the problems with. We all need to have a voice in this. Please get informed and raise your voice around this. Thank you. Hi, my name's John Manzano. I live on the corner of 102 Fay Road. I've lived there for 22 years, and the purpose for me to speak to you this afternoon is to ask for you to support the uh, West Genesee Street overlay. I've lived there uh, with my wife and my family, and over the past 22 years, I've seen uh, many changes uh, to that intersection. We have about, through that intersection each day, uh, we are constantly subject to uh, a lot of light pollution, noise pollution, as well as uh, we're on an ambulance route and a bus route, and pretty much it isn't, there isn't anything residential about where we live. We'd like very much to see a um, change 
uh, to, to the zoning so that we could have both the residential and commercial use of that property. It would be great for the town. It would be good for our tax base. And I just think it, it would be a very wise, uh, progressive movement for the town of Geddes. Thank you. So, Arlie and Jim, how long have you owned Cars Automotive? 32. Too long. <laughs> Stop. 32 years. 32 years we've been there. What was the corner like the day you opened up? Oh, it was. It was awesome. I mean, it, the building was in beautiful condition, and um, our business took off. We we were very very busy for several years. Um, we never had any complaints. Nobody. You know, it was just it was it was great. We had ten employees. We did a lot of repair work. We did. We sold a ton of gas. We really did very well. Flash forward to today, how is it different? Well, today, it's it's uh, a thousand percent different. Um, we're in our 70s now. We'd like to retire, but the town is holding us hostage. Um, they just let Delta Sonic open up their big business down the street from us, which has cut our gas sales down by 50% at least, where we used to sell 120,000, 140,000 gallons a month. Now we, this last month, we sold 20,000 gallons. And we can't compete with them, because if we, no matter what we went down to, if we went down to $1.70, they'd go down to $1.50. If we went down to $1.50, they'd go down to $1.30. They're purposely keeping their gas 20 cents below us, because they're trying to drive us out, and they're doing a very good job. Um, we are charging what most stations around Onondaga County are charging, but because of Delta Sonic and all the stations that surround him, he's, they're trying to compete with him. But I don't know how they're doing it, but we can't, because they're selling it for much less than we're paying. So we have to keep our... Plus, we have to pay our employees to pump it. We have to pay workman's compensation. We have to pay high taxes on our property for liability and all that kind of insurance. And we're just not bringing in enough money on gas now to keep it going. The station itself, we can keep going for now, but not with the gas. It looks like we, we're either gonna have to just stop selling gas altogether or just take the and take the tanks out, or just raise the price so high nobody will come in anyway. So we don't have to pay somebody to pump it. Arlie, why don't you guys just sell and get out? We would love to well, sell. I could have sold that place ten times over, but I got to at least. I got to be town approved. You know, I pay every goddamn. Shh. But I have to pay. And I can't sell it. I have to get the okay from them guys. Yeah, so what is it zoned right now? Residential, I believe. A gas station that's been running for how many years? Since 1968. Is zoned residential. So that means that when that changes hands, if it doesn't stay a gas station, it, it's expected to become a residential lot. Is that my understanding? That's about it. So that's the conundrum of our current zoning system. And, and so have you had other entities approach you about buying the property with a different kind of project? We what just... Kind, what, other, what other offers have you had? We, the latest... Oh, we Walgreens, years ago, 12 years ago, offered it. They wanted it. And I personally thought Walgreens would be a great addition to the community. There are no uh, single drug stores unless you go all the way down to Kinney or fight the traffic at Wegmans, and then beyond. Then they're up in Camillus. But a small Walgreens is what they wanted. And of course, that was the first offer that we got that, that 12 years ago, and that went down the drain. I mean, the, the town, absolutely not, nothing like that. And since then, we've had so many offers, and without it even being for sale, they just approach us and want the corner. And then as, as soon as they find out that they can't do what they want to do, 
and they've all been gas stations except for the Walg. Well, no, I shouldn't. Say. Eckerd's wanted it. Burn Dairy wanted it. Um, oh, there's been so many, so so many. And the latest one was Stewart Chefs. They were already to. They gave us a contract and everything. In Stewart Chefs, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it would have been a wonderful addition to the community. They they were going to rip down the station, put up their own building which are, they're adorable. Plus they had the ice cream shop in there and, and gas and everything. And then they then Delta Sonic opened. And he, they saw what they were doing. They were lowballing the price. They backed out of the deal. And that's been our last chance. And now the town says, oh, we can sell it, but we have to sell it to a repair shop and gas station. Now, I don't know if there's any other repair shop and gas stations in existence in Syracuse anymore. If there are, I don't know, except us. Now, there's no one going to buy it for a gas station repair shop anymore. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Pat's Automotive took out his gas tanks. And uh, now Delta Sonic, I'm sure, is going to force those other businesses that are close by to them. Eventually, they're not going to be able to keep selling it for that. And if you go to another Delta Sonic outside of our community, they're up there like everybody else. So once they get all the gas properties out of their, their, their way, then you're going to see their price go up. And that's exactly what's going to happen, because that's what they're doing. How would um, the town adopting the new professional overlay and the special addendum that relates to your property change your situation at all? Well, then if somebody could come in there and build something that was nice, but not a gas station or a repair shop, it would be wonderful. Then my husband had a heart attack, two heart attacks, one last August and then one in September, and he's lucky to be alive. He, but he's not, you know, his he can't walk very good now, and his um, he can't work like he used to be able to work and keep the station going. And now we would love to put money in it, but it, for what? Nobody's going to buy it anyway, and it would just be a waste of money. Do you think if more people in the town of Geddes, the greater area, understood your dilemma, that they would care? Absolutely. Oh, I'm sure. No, I mean, they would not. I mean, they, they'd love to see something go in there that's nice. And anything that did go in there probably would be very nice. So what would you like to say to anybody watching this videotape today that's new to our plight, that's new to what's happening here, what would you like to leave them with? Well, anybody that wants it should be able to buy it. I mean, it should it's a free country, supposedly, and I mean, all these laws that they've got, I don't understand it because it's been a gas station for for, since it was built, it was built as a golf station in fifties, the fifties, I think, fifties or sixties, I'm not sure. And uh, of course, Delta Sonic ruined everything for a lot of people, not just us. But they sh now a gas station probably won't want it. They can't compete. So somebody's got to take it over to make it look nice. The station across the street from us, there. They're in the same boat, I mean, but they couldn't do anything except sell gas. There's no money in gasoline. So, and they couldn't open their convenience store. So they had to go out of business. And now you see what has happened to that property. I hate to see that happen to ours. But if we have to close it and just keep the, you know, keep it there and we'll let it go like the other place. That's all we can do. Adding to the blight further down the street. Exactly. I understand. Well, thanks you two for spending time telling us your story today. Good luck to you. Thank you. My name is Joseph Gus. I live on the corner of West Genesee Street and Century Drive, right across from the old Dr. Rogers property. My wife has lived there over 40 years. The traffic is steadily increasing. With the development of the areas around us, things are changing. Uh, the overlay that's being proposed is a step in the right direction.
The committee that put it together seems to have sought input from multiple sources and sites similar to the corridor and has created a set of guidelines which will support both the improvement and development of the corridor while striving to keep the neighborhood feel of it. I am a believer that change is inevitable, but managing the change is what the overlay is attempting to do in a positive way. Okay. This is the Honey Residence. It's tucked in a very busy edge of the corridor between a gas station and very near the 690 entrance. And Ms. Honey is one of our senior citizens on the street who told us that she actually was denied snow plowing service by a local plowman because her house is on a state highway. And so they, the traffic is so cumbersome that they just don't have any way to manipulate the snow out of her driveway. So here she is as a senior, most at risk from this dense pollution, and now she can't even get basic services that seniors all rely on in the wintertime. So what you see happening in my yard is a lot of um, environmental work, what I call permaculture. I'm uh, creating planting berms to create my own green buffer to shield me from the pollution. Um, it's been a contentious endeavor. Not all the neighbors have been um, welcoming of the look or the process of this, and yet I really don't feel I have any choice. I, in fact, I feel that our um, town board really needs to consider how they're going to protect the residents on Genesee Street from the increase of the dense pollution from the traffic if they're not going to release us um, from the zoning dilemma. So here's a great example of a wonderful project that replaced a, an overgrown field and an abandoned house that sat there for several decades at the corner of the highway entry. This is owned by the Mark Anthony Company. It's a professional building that, as we can see, retained much of the green space and the large trees in the area and really is a very graceful structure. Um, I'd like to see more of that up and down the street. It's a great use of this property, especially at the very ends of the corridor where, where commercial uh, properties encroach. This would be a great way to resolve some of the problems way down at the end of Fay Road in front of the big uh, mall there, the strip mall. And here on this hodgepodge corner with these gas stations and a professional building and a couple of home occupations and some residents that are really trapped without services in this area between this awkward placement of zoning. Here's an example of an eyesore that all of us on the corridor have had to live with for nearly five years now. We have laws on the books that would have started a clock on this abandoned gas station and have forced the owner's hand into cleaning it up, removing the structure, removing the tanks. Um, we've recently had a change of Zoning Board of Appeals chairperson and he and his new board are actually following the existing law where the gentleman and his group before did not. So what's the effect of having that abandoned gas station sit there all this time has been people coming up and down the street considering do they want to invest in this area, buy a home on Terry Road um, or even on the corridor and looking at the really um, discouraging fact that that gas station's been there unoccupied, unmaintained all this time. So again, we need robust zoning that will attract a stakeholder to invest in a property like that, clean it up, make a viable business that is that is kept in good repair so that we add to our tax base instead of always detracting from it by letting these structures just uh, become uh, abandoned and derelict. That was this the house that I bought. A derelict, abandoned, unmortgageable property. Put a lot of my life savings into renovating it and I've been essentially very happy here. The neighbors that lived behind me thanked me profusely in the months after I renovated the house a few years back. 
it was very discouraging for them to have uh, such a burden of an eyesore at the, you know, as the entry to their lovely neighborhood. Um, but as I've learned about the problems on Genesee Street, the exceptionally high rate of traffic pollution, uh, the problems to all of our health, um, as I've watched the ineffectiveness of previous boards and Zoning Board of Appeals, to actually execute laws we have or to move forward with modern governance to address the issues that we're facing here, I've become discouraged about the increase in the blight. You know, we have about 50 structures, uh, houses, um, in this stretch of Genesee Street that's zoned strictly residential. 10% of those structures are in some form of blight. They're abandoned, they're unoccupied, they've been up for sale at rock bottom prices for over a year and with no interest. People simply do not want to move children and families to the street anymore. We have to have a plan to attract the next level of stakeholder.